Our next topic in chemistry one is metals and alloys. It's pretty quick and easy this one really. Um, the only hard bit is this stuff about copper. So, copper is extracted by heating it with carbon in a furnace and the copper oxide loses its oxygen to the carbon and we end up with copper left over. So we go carbon plus copper oxide to copper plus carbon dioxide. And this here, this is the word equation for that reaction that you do need to know. Now, copper oxide is being reduced in this example because it's losing its oxygen. And once we've got our copper, sometimes it can be a little bit impure. So often we want to purify it, and we do that by a process called electrolysis. So electrolysis is the process by which you use electrical current to split up substances. So electro means using electricity, and lysis means to split. Um, you might come across that word in biology as well, because lysis can mean when a uh, cell dies and it sort of just sort of explodes and pops and all its insides come out. So electrolysis is using electricity and we pass it through a liquid which we call an electrolyte. That's just a liquid that can pass a current through it. And for when we're purifying copper, we use copper to sulfate solution. So this is an example of what it might look like if we were going to set up an electrolysis system. So we've got um, our pure copper on the left, so we need to start with a little bit of pure copper, and then on the right we have our impure copper, so the bit we're trying to purify. And this is all linked to a battery which is up here. Now on one side, the side that's linked to the positive, we call the anode, Stacey, anode. and the negative side is called the cathode. Excuse my horrible handwriting there. So we then apply a current. So my electrons are going to flow from the uh, negative through here, through the liquid, back up the other side and up to the positive. So after it's been going for a while, we, what, what we'll find is that our pure copper, our um, cathode, will have gotten bigger. So I've got more copper has been moved to this side. And my impure copper, I'll have lost some of it so my impure anode uh, yeah anode will have got smaller and I'll have a bit of sludge at the bottom so the sludge are the impurities so over by my pure copper electrode I've just got copper over there so the copper moved from the impure side to the pure bit and it left behind its impurities just as a bit of sludge at the bottom so for those of you doing the higher we need to know a little bit more about what's going on here so at the anode, the copper atoms are losing their electrons, and we call this oxidization. And the half equation, and you can be asked for this, is that we go copper, so Cu minus two electrons gives us copper with a two plus charge, so we make a copper ion. Now at the cathode, the ions are gaining electrons, so this is reduction. And the half equation now looks like this. We've got copper 2 plus plus 2 electrons goes to copper. And to try and help you remember which way around it is, oxidation is losing, reduction is gaining. And the acronym to help you try and remember it is oil rig. It's supposed to be on a separate line there, but never mind. Um, so oxidation is losing electrons, reduction is gaining electrons. Okay, so next up is recycling copper. We just need to be able to discuss whether it's a good thing to do or not. So advantages of recycling copper are that it has a low melting point, which means that it's cheap to melt it down and turn it into other things. It reduces the need for mining, and obviously mining has lots of negative impacts on the environment. And if we recycle copper, it also reduces the cost of it, which is a good thing. The disadvantages of recycling are that it can be difficult to separate the copper out from some things. So for instance, if we've got electrical components from a circuit board and a computer, it can be difficult to get the copper out. We can't use a mixture of pure copper and solder. So if the copper's got mixed up with other things, we can't use it. So it just becomes useless. 
if we are doing recycling, we could actually end up having fewer jobs around because we wouldn't need as many miners to get the copper out and to purify the copper. So we could end up with less jobs. Separating copper out does produce pollution and not everyone recycles copper. So a lot of it still ends up in landfill anyway. So those are some of the negatives. You just need to be able to discuss pros and cons really. So alloys is the last thing on this topic and alloys are just mixtures that contain at least one metal. Uh, but there must be something else in there as well. Now alloys tend to have different properties than the metals that they contain, which means that you can use them for different and more things than you can the regular metals. Some examples that you need to know. So you need to know what they're used for and what's in them. So you need to know that steel uh, can contain iron and aluminium and examples are cutlery or in construction. Bronze is made up of copper and tin and we pretty much just use it for metals really. Brass is uh, zinc and copper. It's often used for ornaments or for plating things to make them look pretty. Solder is made of tin and lead and that's used to hold your electronics together. And amalgam contains mercury and it used to be used in fillings. We don't actually use it in fillings anymore, but you do need to give the answer that it's used in fillings. Um, we don't use it for fillings because mercury is highly toxic, but that wasn't known until relatively recently. So the final little bit is on the higher paper and it's about smart alloys. So smart alloys are ones that uh, can return to their original shape. So you can bend them and they go back to the way they were. An example of this is nitinol, which is a mixture of nickel and titanium. And it's often used for glasses frames because it's quite lightweight and you can bend it and twist it all around and then your glasses frames will go back to the shape they were before. So if you can imagine that, say, you've taken them off and put them in a pocket and forgot about it and you sit down, well, the frames will bend and move so they won't break and they'll go back to the way they were before. Now, smart alloys are a relatively new thing, so they are still finding new purposes for them. And that's one of the exciting things about them, really. So there we go. That's it for this topic. Don't forget, if you've got any questions, do not hesitate to ask me.